further advice in an animal emergency. Communication. Communication is extremely important when contacting the veterinary practice in a first aid situation. This will allow the veterinary practice to prepare and see the patient as soon as possible. The information you may give the veterinary practice is the description of what the emergency is, the species of animal and age. The receptionist may also ask you more questions over the phone as well to help with deal with the first aid situation. Not only does the customer have to communicate with the veterinary practice, but the staff within the veterinary practice have to communicate clearly to one another. This will give better health outcomes to the animal. How the veterinary practice can help in first aid situations. When a customer contacts the veterinary practice about emergency situation, the veterinary surgeon will determine if the animal needs medical attention immediately or can be postponed slightly. This depends on the situation. The veterinary surgeon will provide advice over the phone. However, this is limited due to not seeing the animal physically. If the veterinary surgeon decides the animal needs to come to the veterinary clinic, then the staff will deal with the emergency in the practice. The veterinary practice will need to use handling and restraint techniques to deal with the first aid situation. This may include a lead and collar, the advantages of this include easy solution to put on the animal and will allow name tags to be placed to prevent getting mixed up with other animals. The disadvantages of this is the collar around the neck may become tight. Muzzles may be used on aggressive animals. These are very effective. However, the muzzle might be very difficult to put on the animal, causing injury to the veterinary staff. For larger animals like horses, lead ropes and head collars may be used. The advantages of this is having space between you and the horse. However, the lead rope may snap, causing the horse to spook. Specialised veterinary equipment. There are specialised veterinary equipment in the veterinary practice what staff will use for specific reasons and in different areas of the practice. However, there are risks with each equipment, which I will be explaining further. Stethoscope. Stethoscopes are used to hear the animal's heartbeat. These are used in consultations, preoperative care, perioperative care, postoperative care and checkups. The concerns with this is that it may be in a noisy environment, so it may be difficult to hear the heartbeat correctly. Pulse oximeter. This is used to measure the percentage of the oxygen saturation in the haemoglobin. This can be used in surgery. However, this may provide the wrong reading that can be too low or too high. Capnography. This measures the carbon dioxide in animals. Breath in wavelengths. This can be done in surgery. However, this may not read the CO2 in smaller animals under the 5 kilogram mark, as the lung capacity is a lot smaller. X ray machines. The X-ray machine gives the image through the body and is done by electromagnet radiation. This can be done to check an animal before an operation as well as after an operation. However, X-ray machines cause radiation, causing high exposure to the veterinary staff, causing a risk of cancer. Nasoesophageal stethoscope. This is placed in the esophagus and monitors the heart and lung sound when the animal is under anaesthesia. This is used in surgery. However, make sure care is given not to place the esophageal stethoscope into the trachea. Hot water bottle. Hot water bottle warms up the temperature of the patient. This can be used in emergencies such as hypothermia. 
The issues with this is that the animal or staff member may become burnt if the water is too hot. And if the steam is not let out, then the water bottle can explode, causing burns to the patient. Heart rate monitor. This is a sensor that goes onto the animal's body on the lateral side of the animal's rib cage, which allows the heart rate to be read. This can be done during surgeries and after surgeries. However, the right reading may not be shown. Weighing scales. Weighing scales are used to weigh the animal from various sizes. Scales can be used in checkups, consultations, and may even be used before surgery. However, large scales may cause a trip hazard. Blood pressure monitor. This is used on small and large animals to measure the blood pressure. This can be done during surgery. However, the reading may not always be accurate. Endoscope. This is used to look at different body systems in more or less invasive way and decrease in anaesthetic. This may be used for a gastrointestinal foreign, bod foreign body. This can be done under anaesthetic. However, the patient may bleed in rare circumstances and the gut may tear. And the patient may also have reaction to the anaesthetic. Ophthalmoscope. This allows the surgeon to see the back and front of the eye for any disease or eye detachment. This can be used for in a checkup, in a consultation. However, this may damage the patient's optic nerve, a loss of vision or retina tear. Auroscope. This allows to see inside of the area this can be done during checkups. However, it needs to be turned off once used. Otherwise, when it is needed to be used next, the battery will be flat, meaning it will be unable to be used until charged again. And if it is not cleaned properly, this may cause ear infections. Bear hugger. This is a blanket that allows the patient to get warm safely to normal body temperature. This is used if an animal has hypothermia. This can be used before, during or after surgery. However, it might become contaminated when in surgery, which gives the patient risk of infection. Hematocrit reader. This measures the red blood cells within the patient's body. Too many or too little may be a sign of disease. This can be carried out in consultations. However, the animal may have excessive bleeding or have an infection after. FIV, FELV snap test. This is a test to see if the felines have feline immunodeficiency virus or feline leukemia virus. This can be done in consultation room for checkups. However, it is 95% accurate, so 5 out of 100 cats may have the wrong results. Dermatophytes test. This is a diagnosis of canines of dermophysis. This is carried out in the veterinary practice in checkups. As long as the test is examined every day for 14 days. However, if it is kept in the light, it may not show the right readings and the air may be too dry or too humid to get a correct result. Digital thermometer. This is used by placing in the ear of the animal and recording the animal's temperature. It is used before, during and after operations, as well as in general checkups in a consultation. However, the beep may make the animal jump or you might not be able to hear the beep. The digital thermometer is also not suitable for small animals. Biochemistry blood machine. This is a blood machine that measures the amount of blood cells, type of blood, protein, antibodies and thyroid. This can be done in consultation. However, it may not always show an accurate reading. Infusion pump. The infusion pump will allow fluids 
drugs and other supplements to be administered through treatments. This can be done through surgery. However, infections are high and may become present. Preoperative care. Preoperative care means the animal that needs veterinary attention has gone for surgery. The surgery is most sterile in the morning due to less animals being in the practice. Therefore, the operation happens first thing. Consultations are carried out with the owner. This is where the veterinary surgeon will explain the operation, such as risks involved when carrying out the operation on the animal. A consultation will also include a visual health check and a physical health check. This will be the animal's temperature, weight and the pulse. This will also determine if the operation is safe to carry out. When the consultation is complete, the animal will be transferred to the kennel until scheduled time for the operation. Medication is given to the animal before anaesthetic is given. This is called pre-medication. The anaesthetic will then be given after. The animal can then be placed onto the operation table in the correct position, such as ventral, lateral or dorsal in which iodine is used around the area of the operation to clean the area. Perioptive care. Perioptive care means during the surgical procedure. This is when the veterinary nurse will check the pulse, respiration and temperature of the animal every five minutes and record the details. This will allow the veterinary nurse to alter the anaesthetic machine correctly throughout the procedure. The veterinary nurse will carry out all this. This is due to the veterinary surgeon needing to concentrate on the surgery they are carrying out on the animal. Post-operative care. Post-operative care is when the surgery is finished. The animal will be bandaged up and some animals may need a cone around the head to prevent them from biting or licking the stitches. Like the perioperative care, the animal will have to have the pulse, respiration and temperature checked to make sure the animal is waking up from anaesthetic safely. Using a towel or bubble wrap to keep the animal warm is vital to prevent shock. If a lot of fluid is lost, such as the burns and bearded dragon scenario, then fluid therapy is needed and ensure it is dripping at the right times. This fluid therapy can also keep the animal warm if heated. Post-operative advice to owners will be a schedule to follow of feeding times and amounts and the amount of exercise. This will be stated by the veterinary surgeon as each animal will be different. If the owner recognises signs of pain such as panting, lameness or a loss of appetite, then the owner will need to call the veterinary practice. Conclusion in an emergency, you may have to carry out the first aid if unable to get to a veterinary clinic to preserve life and prevent the animal from suffering. This is carried out by the three P's. Preserve life, prevent the condition in getting worse and promote recovery. The ABC is carried out, meaning checking the airways are not blocked, making sure the animal is breathing and checking the circulation with the capillary refill time. The first aid at home may be helpful to have first aid kit containing the basics for what animal first aid may need. Under the Veterinary Surgeon Acts 1966, it states you cannot diagnose the problem or administer drugs to the animal. In this six part series, first aid scenarios have been given, such as bur burns in bearded dragons, broken blood feathers in parrots, CPR in dogs and road accident in dogs. These provide information on what to do before you can get to a veterinary practice to prevent the condition in getting worse. Once arrived at the veterinary practice, the veterinary staff will take over by handling and restraining the animal correctly in order to use the specialised veterinary equipment. If the animal needs operation, then preoperative, perioperative and postoperative care is taken into account to prevent the animal becoming infected.